God's got a word for us today, and it links in with what Julie was saying last week, and there's no surprise, the word of love. I don't know if you've heard that phrase before, I haven't, but I, uh, I just thought I'd just share with, with you what God has showed me about it. I got born again by a miracle one evening in 1982. And most of us would probably consider our salvation to be a miracle anyway. But my miracle to me was outstanding. Because I started that evening as a heathen atheist. At 7.30 that night, I didn't believe there was a God. So I, I, nobody at that time, nobody convinced me there was. But I'd been invited by our neighbours to go to their house and um, I just thought about it and I decided I'd go with my wife to this house. She'd been praying for us anyway, that God would intervene and get me sorted out. But, absolutely. And it did so, God got me to go to the house rather than my wife shoot me. You know, because I think that's what she would have done otherwise. <laughs> but I went to that house last night, that night. And there was something about the atmosphere in that house that I'd never experienced before. I could not have told you anything about it that night. I couldn't, at the end, if you'd have said what it was like in that house, I would have said, I, I couldn't tell you, no idea. I worked out afterwards that what had happened was I had encountered love. I had encountered love in that place. These people in that house, just a few doors from us, cared about my eternal future and my neighbours the other side, the other side uh, didn't, weren't even interested in me at all hardly. That made a change to me. I didn't know I'd encountered love but I now know I did. Something was triggered inside of me so that suddenly I believed the Bible. Just like that. The following morning I didn't, we didn't have a Bible, so the following day I went out to the town and bought a Bible. Didn't have one, didn't own a Bible. And I started reading it, and I was reading it, I was believing it. Because God had done something on the inside of me, he put love inside me. He put love inside me. Now the key to this message today is this scripture in 1 John 4.16. And we have known and believed the love that God has for us. Have you? Have you known that and, and believed the love of God for you? God is love. And he who abides in God, and God, and he, 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 I'll start again. He who abides in love, abides in God, and God in him. See, it says God is love. Yes, he's loving, and yes, he's kind, but he isn't just that. He actually is love. So I didn't know then, that then, I became a believer of the Bible, the word of love. Because if you can, you can change the word God to the word love, any time you like in the Bible, and love said, and love came, and love did, and love gave. Whenever you see the word of God, you can change it to love, anytime you want. In the beginning of the, of, of the Bible, in Genesis, it says, in the beginning, love created the heavens and the earth. Why did love create the heavens and the earth? Because he loved the people who he knew were coming, all of us, including us, who were going to come onto this earth. He loved us so much, he wanted us to have a wonderful place to live. And then when the devil messed things up, he love decided he was going to send his only begotten son so that we could be redeemed and then end up living in a place designed by love. Amen? Everything from God was created by and to demonstrate love. All God wants for us is to love and to be loved. He wants us to know we're loved and he wants us to love as well. Love him, love his son, love his Holy Spirit, love his people, love everyone. Amen? 
because you, the Bible says later, in later on Jesus said love your enemy so that includes everybody I guess the people you like the people you fam, got family the people you don't like doesn't matter whether you like them or not love them amen hallelujah so I'm going to continue on that vein then so it's now this is now this Bible here is now the word of love we call it the word of God I'm going to call it the word of love today in 1 Corinthians 13, 13 uh, and now abides faith hope and love these three but the greatest of these is love there are three essentially important things in the kingdom of God faith hope and love you will have heard that some people uh, call themselves word of faith people there's some churches call themselves word of faith churches around the world there's other churches are called hope chapel and the like the greatest of these three is love we at FCF are a word of love church until this message I would have called us a word of faith church I would have called us anything but because we're trusting in the word of God who is love I'm going to call it a word of love church and people have said that they feel as if they experience the love of God here they experience a welcome that makes them feel comfortable they experience things that makes them feel like they like to be here and I know that God wants to bless us in that by referring to you don't have to do it yourself but I'm going to be referring to this as the word of love because I know that that really means that to me it's not just the word of God Almighty it's the word of love himself he is love everything about him makes it love and I believe that if you're operating in love because there's the three things there faith, hope and love if you're operating in the greatest one of love the other two will automatically be working in your love in your life you'll have the faith and hope you will find so easy to operate in if you're operating in love anybody here feel loved? yeah? we'll pray for the ones who have either got sore arms or, or <laughs> absolutely we are loved, we are loved by God if we're not loved by other people amen? so the most important of those three faith, hope and love is love so we're going to keep mentioning love again here in 1 Corinthians 13 1 says though I speak with the tongues of men and of angels but have not love I am become sounding brass or a clanging cymbal and though I have the gift of prophecy and understand all mysteries and knowledge and though I have all faith so that I can remove mountains and have not love I am nothing if you were to take Julie's message last week to heart and have like a permanent pit stop by praying in tongues all the time if you don't also operate in love your tongues sound to God like a clanging cymbal it's just noise so you can be pray actually I've heard people praying like that sadly who are praying they've got such a thing against the person or against the situation you can hear them praying in tongues but you can't feel any love behind it and the whole idea of praying in tongues is that you should be motivated by love, motivated by love to do it you know, we've already heard about uh, praying, for, praying for your co-worker or praying for your boss because they're not doing, doing you very nicely and you pray for them in love and everything gets changed Amen. it's the love in you as you pray in tongues that makes it sound sweet to God it's the, if the motive for praying in tongues is love it will be the sweetest sound in God's ears and he will love it you won't sound like a clanging cymbal to him he loves to hear us pray in love he loves to hear us pray in a way that demonstrates what he did through, through Jesus Christ for us love himself sent Jesus to that cross 
And if you've got the greatest faith of all people, everybody you know in the Christian life, everybody you know, you've got greater faith than all of them, unless you're operating in love too, it doesn't say your words sound bad. It doesn't say that's clashing somebody. It says you are nothing. That's a bit sharp, isn't it? A bit harsh. What it's saying is, <clears throat> not just in your prayer, but if you're operating in a way that doesn't have love in it, you are having no effect in the kingdom of God. <clears throat> no effect whatsoever. You can be praying and praying and praying as much as you like. God won't hear you because it sounds like a clanging cymbal. And if you're not operating in love, you're having no effect in his kingdom. That's what it means about nothing. If I haven't got love, I'm nothing. He wants us to be effective in his kingdom. And the way to be effective in his kingdom is get your focus on love. More important than trying to work out how you're going to get a problem resolved is to realize that however it's going to be done, it has to be done in love. When you're going to be praying for somebody who is causing you a problem, uh, it doesn't make a difference. Whatever you think afterwards, make your first port of call, I've got to do this in love. If I do it in love, through the power of love and the word of love, things will change. Amen? God wants us to know that today. In John 15, 12, Jesus said, This is my commandment, that you love one another as I have loved you. Greater love has no one than this, than to lay down one's life for his friends. So loving one another, loving other people, and that just doesn't just include the church, everybody. It's a commandment from Jesus. It's not a suggestion, it's not something it might be good if you did it, or it'll improve your life slightly if you, if you do love, lay your life down for other people. Loving other people is a commandment from Jesus. He wants us though, not just to love the people, he wants us to love them like he loved us. We're back to the cross that we've spoken about before. Well, Jesus went to that cross so we could be set free, so we could be born again. That's the kind of love he wants us to demonstrate for other people. He wants us to love other people like he loved us. So we're prepared to sacrifice. We're prepared to go without something we want so that they can have what they need. Many times we have prayed for and prayed a prayer of love for somebody who is speaking against us. We've had other people, other churches, other ministries, other people all over the place speaking against us. Mainly because of the Holy Spirit. Mainly because people don't like <coughs> hearing about the Holy Spirit and how the Holy Spirit can bless them. So they speak against us. Makes no difference because as soon as you start speaking against us, we're going to pray for you. And we're going to pray for you in love. And we're going to pray that you get blessed. You know, if somebody is, somebody's having a go at us, we would, most people would think, well, yeah, curse them. Yeah, let's get rid of, make sure they never prosper, never have anything good happen in their lives. A lot of people would think that. No. Bless them, Lord. Bless them in abundance. Let everything be absolutely wonderful in their lives. Because we would love to be operating now. We've been criticised for that when we when we said, don't, no, don't worry about it. I'm going to go, don't worry about it. We're, we're praying about it. Yeah, but you need to be doing something about it. Yeah, we are. We're praying about it. We're praying and we're believing God and God is doing something because love is doing something here. Love is involved in this situation. The greatest thing is to lay down your life for your friends. Laying down your life doesn't mean necessarily dying like Jesus does. The biggest thing about laying down your life is you stop thinking, what am I going to do about this? And start thinking, what is love going to do about this through me? And you stop thinking, well, I'm too busy today. I can't, I can't go and see that person and pray for them. No, laying down your life says you put aside what you want to do and you do what he wants you to do. You do it because love is promoting this person's good 
in front of you. Love is trying to get you to see this person, the love in the, going through this person, going towards this person, is paramount. More important than anything you could be doing. You know, you need to be in that place. If God calls you to go and speak to somebody, don't argue, just go and do it. Because that's what he wants to do at that time. And he knows best. Laying down, what our flesh wants you to do, is laying down your life. So you can be there for that other person. Isn't that wonderful? Done that a few times, so I know it works. <coughs> and we, we bless people's lives as a result of it. In Galatians 5.14, For all the law is fulfilled in one word, even in this. You shall love your neighbour as yourself. I spoke about this recently. And, and I'm sure we all want to obey God's law, God's word, the word of love. You can fulfill every aspect of this word. When you love your neighbour as you love yourself. All the law is fulfilled in this statement. Love your neighbour as yourself. If you're loving your neighbour as yourself, this is the most easy, easy thing to obey, to follow, to be guided by, because love is your motive. But the key about it is, remember this, to love your neighbour as yourself first, you have to love yourself. Some people, if they love their neighbour the way they love themselves, they go get their neighbour and give them a smack. <laughs> yeah? They go to the neighbour and shout and scream at them. They go to the neighbour and abuse them and tell them horrible things about them, how useless they are. And you love your neighbour as yourself, you've got to love yourself first. And the easiest way to love yourself is to look in the word of love and realise that love himself sent his son Jesus to the cross so you could be part of his kingdom. You could be part of that kingdom of love. Loving yourself and loving your neighbour, the Bible says here, will correctly position you to obey every word in the word of love. It will put you in that right place because you've got the right attitude towards it. If you, uh, many times, um, when I was in the army, we had to do uh, our annual fitness test. And I know it's different nowadays, uh, but back in the, the day, we used to have a 10-mile march, uh, and then we used to do uh, a 100-yard carry of somebody else on your back. And then you had to uh, climb a six-foot wall, jump an eight-foot ditch, and fire three rounds into a target. Did I want to do this? No, I did not. But more than not wanting to do it, I didn't want to have to do it twice. <laughs> yeah? So you have to, absolutely must do this with the greatest power you possibly can, otherwise you're going to fail the test. The thing with God is, there's no test to fail. When he says for you to do something and you don't do it, and we're all guilty of that, either he'll get somebody else to do it or he'll talk to you about it another time. If he wants the thing done and it doesn't matter who does it, and he asks you, he'll get somebody else to do it. If he wants you to do it because you're going to get blessed out of it, he'll keep talking about it until you do it. He wants you to love your neighbour as you love yourself. So you've got to love yourself first. When you're in that correct place of being able to fulfill all the word of love, simply because you're loving your neighbour as yourself, there's no personal effort involved. No personal effort involved whatsoever or needed, none needed at all. Because you put yourself in the right place. When I went on those uh, fitness test each year, I put myself in the right place. I turned up and I did my very, very best and it was always enough because I made sure it was. When we put ourselves in the right place and we find it hard sometimes, I, every single time I, I find it hard, things hard, I have to say, I can't do this in my strength, Lord. Can you give me your strength to do it? 
when I'm weak, I'm strong. So when I declare I'm weak, he's strong in me. And it will get done. I love you all, everybody in the church. <clears throat> and I want the best for you. I will absolutely want the best for you in your life. So I ask love himself to show me in the word of love what to share with you. So I'm sharing, every time I share, I'm sharing the word of love with you. Because God wants the best for you and so do I. I want you to be blessed in abundance so much you're telling everybody all day long about Jesus because he's been so wonderful in your life. Amen? In 1 John 2, 5 But whoever keeps his word, truly the love of God is perfected in him and by this we know that we're in him. Turning that last statement around, here it tells us if we obey his word which is love, we'll have his love perfected in us, matured in us, fully grown in us, in our lives. So just by obeying him, the love is perfected, the love grows, the love matures, love is everything it needs to be in our life, his love. And we remember too that the word, the, the love of God is shed abroad in our hearts by the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit comes and puts the love of God inside us. We don't have to generate love. It's already in us. We can use that love to, to bless people. So operating in love and obeying his word are seriously linked together. Whichever one you do makes the other one work. If you're loving people, you'll find it easy to obey his word. And here it says, if you obey his word, love will be matured in you. The two are working together. It was because of love that Jesus obeyed his Father and went to the cross. Because of love for you and me. And I know that love is doing it because love is making a massive difference in people's lives. Amen? 1 John 3, 18 says, My little children, let us not love in word or tongue, but in deed and in truth. Don't just talk about love and loving. Do it. Be practical about it. Personally, I was never brought up in a family where the word love, I love you, or anything like that was ever used, sadly, uh, to anyone, from anyone. I had to learn that. I had to come out of that situation, and I had to learn that. And I had to learn more, I've learned even more since I became a Christian because I, now I know that this is the word of love and love himself saved me. Indeed and in truth means you don't just love because the word of love says so, you do it because you mean it. It's, there's a difference between saying God loves you and demonstrating God loves you by doing something for someone. Like a song we heard many years ago, one of the lines is, love is not a feeling, it's an act of your will. Love is not about how you feel. You can feel awful towards someone and still love them. Yeah? You can feel as if that person has really hurt you, <coughs> really, really hurt you, and you can still love them, you can still pray loving for them. You just decide to do it. Now, <clears throat> I don't know what you consider uh, an act of love is. <clears throat> the other day, there were some people in my family who needed um, some things from the chemist. So, I said I would go and pick them up from the chemist. And I would go and take something to the chemist, pick something else up from the chemist and get a prescription. I had to go to the same chemist um, in the avenue three times that day. The first time, I had to wait outside for 25 minutes. The second time I went, I had to wait outside for 25 minutes. No, 20 minutes. The third time I went, <coughs> I waited for 45 minutes. I spent an hour and a half, stood outside the pharmacy, getting these prescriptions and these things done. Why? 
because I love the people and I'm doing this because I love them. Did I want to do that? Of course not. I wanted to go to the chemist and be the first to the queue, walk in, get it and come straight out. It's not always like that. It's not always like that. When I'd finished it and brought, did all the things and given the things to the people, uh, did I have a little moan about it? Yes, I did. <coughs> it's okay to have a little moan about it when you've done it. Don't have a moan about it in advance before you've even done it. Certainly don't moan about it while you're doing it. It's okay to have a little flesh flash and have a little moan afterwards. But the key is, and I'm not really bragging on me, but I'm just an example. The key is, you're demonstrating love by doing something for somebody else, no matter what it costs you. I didn't want to be standing out there for an hour and a half. And nor did any of the other people. The last time I went there, I was about number 12 in the queue. And it took a long time to get inside. And when I got inside, I was told, well, could you just wait five minutes? And then when I came out, there were 18 people in the queue. It just went on and on. And I'm sure all those people were doing exactly the same. There was a lady I talked to behind me. She, she wasn't there for herself. She was there getting some medication for her husband. She may well have realized it, but she was demonstrating love too. Love is not a feeling. It's an act of your will. It's something you decide to do. And you go and do that for someone. What could you do for someone? who you know right now, because God has been speaking you, to you already, you need to do something for that, some, that one person. You need to do something for that person and bless them. You need to do something in a way that is maybe just praying for them. Maybe God just wants you to pray for somebody. But pray in love. Pray in love. Make sure you're, you're, you're not a clanging symbol. Make sure you're praying in love and God hears you, because you want that person to be blessed. And I know that God wants to bless each one of us today. He wants us to bless us with the ability to know more about his word of love than we've ever known before and be able to demonstrate the word of love in other people's lives by showing them not only how he has loved you but how he can love them too. And I know that the love of God is shed abroad in our hearts by the Holy Spirit so we don't have to work it out, we don't have to gain it, we don't have to try and get it, we don't have to pray and fast till we get love. It's been placed in our hearts already so we're going to enjoy loving other people, and especially loving ourselves. Amen? Amen. Be blessed in Jesus' name. How are you? <laughs> thank you, Jesus. Father, I thank you, Father, for this. This week has been a difficult week so far, and I thank you, Father, for the love that's been put into us and the love that we've been demonstrating to one another, especially, Lord, to, to, to Ray and Vivian's family. I thank you, Father, you continue to help us to support them and bless them in Jesus' name. Amen.